we see new models coming on the scene every day, every week. We're seeing now new agents come in with new capabilities. And so, again, when we lead with an open ecosystem approach, this is really where you can bring in those best of breed solutions and then ultimately get more value out of your agentic experiences, leading to a more rapid, you know, sort of velocity to that innovation. Hi, I'm Fernando Sorenza, Senior Director of Product Management here at Box, and I'm responsible for partner integrations. Today, we're going to be talking to Gary Lerhaupt, VP of Product Architecture for Agent Force at Salesforce. Hey, Gary. How are you? I'm doing well, Fernando. Great to be here. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. I'm super excited uh, to be talking about everything about AI. Yeah, it's uh, always fast moving, so nice to take a moment to catch our breath and catch up to where we're at in the uh, industry. Excellent. All right. So we've been promised the AI revolution for years. So what has happened in the last 12 to 18 months that makes this time real? And why should enterprise care about it? Yeah, totally. So if we look back over the last couple of years, we've now taken this move from where we started with bots and delivering sort of our first chat based experiences where we have these overly deterministic on the rails experiences that can deliver some amount of value through a chat based experience, can work through certain workflows, but ultimately would hit the edges of what they were capable of. Um, they were sort of too deterministic, too brittle. And now we've moved into the generative AI era where we're able to deliver whole new types of experiences on top of LLMs, reasoning models, where we can now have these chat based uh, experiences, whether it's a service agent, uh, employee based agent, and really have these dynamic capabilities where we can even now plug in tools, et cetera, to deliver whole new types of outcomes uh, to our agents. And I think if I were to extend that just a little bit further, we're now into this next little bit of an era where we start to think about what we call hybrid reasoning. It's the idea that with bots, we had all of this amazing determinism, but it was too deterministic. Mm. With generative AI, we end up with all of these creative capabilities with LLMs, but you can't really fundamentally get to 100% of reliability with what your agents can deliver. And so now what we're seeing with Agent Force and what we've heard from our customers is this idea that we want to mix the uh, determinism that we saw with bots with the capabilities and creativity of gen ai and so like we've got this agent script thing that we've just launched with uh, agent force and that just went into ga recently that's the idea that we can have natural language instructions mixed with the determinism of uh, scripting capabilities if then else statements and that for us is very exciting because it means we can take determinism bring it together with gen ai and get to that 100 percent of reliability so it is fast moving, and in just a couple of years, we've come a really long way. Yeah, that's amazing. And congrats on your GA, by the way. Thank you. So, yeah, it sounds like the big shift is from agents that can just summarize or retrieve content to now agents that can execute multi-step workflows or even delegate things. So can you just paint me a picture of how that looks like inside a real company? Yeah, totally. So, I mean, it was amazing to be able to connect uh, data into agents. You think about answering uh, questions from knowledge and being able to bring to bear like FAQ type use cases for service agents. Now what we're doing is we're seeing orchestration come on the scene, right? The idea that you can bring in tools, you can bring in other agents. And then fundamentally, instead of building an agent that has sort of an ever burgeoning amount of context and instructions brought to bear, what we're seeing is building out specialized agents where you build those agents for specific capabilities or specific jobs to be done. That's really great because you can really hone those in across the lifecycle, make sure that they're working for those jobs to be done. And then now with delegation of fundamentally with orchestration, what you can do is you can have that chat GPT like cloud like experience where you just go to one interface. You can start to communicate whatever it is you're trying to accomplish with your agent. And then fundamentally with orchestration, with this idea of delegation, it can then get it to the proper sub agent for the job to be done. And so we end up with this really great experience, right, where you can just start talking from one client and regardless of what it is you're trying to accomplish, it gets routed to the proper sub agent. You get the, the response that you're looking for. You get the value that you need for whatever your use case is. Yeah, that's great. And, you know, Salesforce and Box are both pretty big on uh, protocols like MCP or A2A. So in plain English, why are these the protocols of the future? Yeah, totally. So like, I think first and foremost, you know, protocol uh, acronyms aside, what we need in order to work together is the ability to speak a similar language, to be able to understand similar conventions, right? So if we go back and we think to the internet, right? Like you needed HTTP to be able to communicate mm. uh, with servers across the internet. You needed conventions like REST so that we could decide how did we want to build APIs so services could work together? 
It's the same effective uh, situation here just now with agents. And so we need protocols where we can communicate with one another. We can speak the same language and we need conventions for how we should then talk and work together. And so that's where you see MCP in the last year and A2A even less than the last year come on the scene to effectively allow us to get more uh, capabilities into our agents and collaborate between agents. And so when should developers reach uh, and use MCP versus A2A? What are those good for? And do they compete? Do they complement each other? How do you see that? Yeah, totally. I think they're very much complementary. So you can think about how MCP is really about how do I extend the capabilities of agents, mm -hmm. right? So it has these concepts of MCP-based tools or MCP-based resources where you can effectively plug in APIs directly into a single agent mm -hmm. and then add capabilities. It can then reach out via that API, affect those tool calls, bring those capabilities into the agent. Likewise, on the resource side of MCP, it's plugging in data, right? So now you have new ways to get knowledge into your agents and then affect a broader surface area. So that's really about bringing in capabilities into your agents. That's what MCP is really strong for. A2A, mm -hmm. you can think about how do we collaborate between agents, right? So capabilities on MCP, collaboration with A2A. And so A2A has these core constructs around, look, we're trying to achieve a goal. How do we break that down into tasks? It has this task-based abstraction. You can then, via that orchestration and delegation we were just talking about, really then farm out the tasks to individual sub-agents. It also has fundamentally underneath the hood the idea that it can manage the life cycle of those tasks, bring that all back together to provide uh, greater amounts of value. And so as you think about that, I think it's really exciting then to, to, to consider how you can build business processes on top of A2A uh, and really just the amount of ROI you're going to be able to deliver on top of multi-agent experiences is quite exciting. That's great. Uh, we've had a, a little bit of news this week with Anthropic donating uh, the modal context protocol to the Linux Foundation and also helping establish the Agentic AI Foundation, uh, and which I know Salesforce is also part of. What does true industry governance change for customers? Yeah, so I, I think it's a, a really great uh, step in the right direction to see these protocols getting brought into the open source community. You know, Box and Salesforce, we were foundational members of the A2A protocol. That was also donated into the Linux Foundation, I think, uh, earlier in the summer right. uh, of this year of 2025. It's a great foundation, right, for us to then build on where you are seeing effectively there's no one entity in full control over these things. They end up being really governed by the industry. And so now with the Agentic AI Foundation uh, that Salesforce is also participating in, this is really exciting because MCP, which is barely a year old, is now also being donated into to the open source community. And you can really just kind of sort of think about that as these open source building blocks that lay a foundation for us to then build on top of, right? And so then we are able to then move up the value chain and start focusing on other problems because yes, the industry can affect how do we want to make MCP and A2A better, but then ultimately, you know, there's, there's standards that we need for how do we do monetization across agents? How do we do UI across agents, right? And so we've recently seen a sort of proliferation of standards with MCP UI and A2 UI coming on the scene, a couple of others. And now we're going to work through uh, where exactly do we want that to go? How do we standardize for things like UI? And it's really important to start from an open foundation so that we can then move up that value chain. Yeah, I think we eventually converged with MCP apps. So... Customers are actually terrified of the next wall garden. How do open standards actually prevent the locking nightmare we live through with SaaS? Yeah, totally. I think it's it's all got to be about this open ecosystem based approach, right? If you think about uh, having an open uh, approach and avoiding the walled garden, for me, it's really about bringing the best of breed solutions to bear. And that's really why you want to not be in a locked in walled garden, right? So we think about with an agent force, what are our core capabilities? What are we able to deliver? And so, you know, having service agents or employee agents, now ITSM and on and on, these are our core capabilities as Salesforce. And what we really want to do is allow our customers to leverage the, the best of breed outside into the ecosystem. And so, you know, the box agent for doing document analysis and, you know, on, et cetera, into the ecosystem. We want to bring that approach in so that customers can bring the right solution for them so that they can build uh, additional capabilities with ease. So definitely don't want that walled garden. And all of that then leads up to what I think about as sort of a velocity of innovation, right? Because we see new models coming on the scene every day day, every week. We're seeing now new agents come in with new capabilities. And so, again, when we lead with an open ecosystem approach, this is really where 
you can bring in those best of breed solutions and then ultimately get more value out of your agentic experiences, leading to a more rapid, you know, sort of velocity to that innovation. Yeah, absolutely. That's super uh, exciting. So, you know, Salesforce owns all the structured customer data, whereas Box owns all the unstructured data, including contracts, for example. So how does true agent to agent collaboration stitch these two worlds together? Yeah, totally. So I mean, this is a great example of this best of breed that we were just discussing, which is you have built out this really amazing box agent for document analysis, for extraction of details. You know, we're, we're thinking on uh, the Salesforce side about, let's say, a sales agent. And this is something that we actually built for Dreamforce, which was just now a couple months ago. And it was a real world example on the path to delivering what we're doing with multi-agent here, uh, delivering pilots in the winter. And so what we built for Dreamforce, it, it really puts a finer point on making this very real and very valuable. And so we built out, the, you, you and I together and our teams, the capability of, of bringing a sales agent into uh, Slack. So we started from a sort of a Slack user interface. And we built this use case together of doing an analysis of an RFP or request for a proposal with that RFP living in box. Effectively, we we're able to orchestrate and do something together with our agents, orchestrated together, such that we can look at that RFP, analyze it, and come to a response on the order of minutes. And so it was a really exciting experience where in the UI, in the demo, effectively, the sales agent is asking the box agent to go retrieve the document and come back with its analysis of the RFP. The sales agent is then able to recommend an approach based on other opportunities, create a new opportunity directly into our, our CRM, show those objects as first class uh, citizens living in Slack, and then ultimately respond to that RFP, upload that right back into Box. And uh, it's super exciting as a sort of first step because, again, as I, as I stated at the outset, it's this idea that something that would have taken hours, you can really bring that down into minutes. And I think critically to all of this is human in the loop. Right? We built this use case where, yeah, we can get going with the first draft of an RFP uh, response, but you want to bring that back to the human. And so something like Slack is the perfect user interface where an employee can affect this multi-agent orchestration and then start from that rough draft, build it out, uh, hone it over time, and then go deliver it and go win whatever that proposal was. So it's starting to be real uh, right here now. As we get into 2026, it's going to feel uh, uh, extremely exciting as we deliver this for customers. Yeah, so cool. Yeah, that was a really great demo, by the way. Thanks for sharing. We've been talking a lot about uh, agents, specialized agents, and there's obviously an explosion of specialized agents like a contract agent, a, a compliance agent, etc. So are we heading towards an app store for agents where people are going to be able to hire all these agents or maybe be able to install them, use them? How will the future look like in that respect? Yeah, totally. I think that's exactly what we're looking at here, right? So we've announced uh, within Salesforce this agent exchange uh, surface area that mm. we're delivering. And so we're having today within agent exchange the idea that we have pre-vetted MCP servers that you can very quickly kind of browse the catalog effectively like an app store then go from that to installing that in our agent gateway and getting going with building on top of that. You're gonna see that extend from MCP service to pre-vetted third-party agents. And we wanna do that exactly so that we can give customers a leg up on effectively the discovery challenge. What is out there? What's available? How can I extend my agents across what uh, the ecosystem has to offer and make that very easy to, to, to find, discover, and, and start building with? And so how do you think the who will curate the quality and the security of all these agents? How yeah. do you think that will work out? Yeah, totally. So we want to think very deeply leading with trust, right? So our agent exchange experience is all about building with our partners, love having Box uh, as a representative on that agent exchange experience. And for us, it's then all about pre-vetting, doing the trust verification, uh, standing behind that with those pre-vetted MCP servers and soon to be third-party agents so that as you get going within Salesforce, within AgentForce, you know that we're leading with trust. You know that you can trust the experiences that you're going to be able to deliver with your customers. That's really great. Now we have to talk about security. I think when agents uh, work across silos, uh, CISOs just freak out. So how do we convince them that this whole thing is safe? Yeah, it's all about governance, right? So I was referencing how we start from agent exchange where we've done some pre-vetting. We ultimately want this open ecosystem approach where people can bring whatever it is that they trust into agent for us so that they can extend the capabilities in the way that they need. But we do that by keeping IT admins in control. And so in our case, we have this agent gateway where you can register only as an admin your MCP servers. You can register those third-party agents 
only then allow listing certain tools that you want to make available. That then allows the builders to get going with the things that are pre-analyzed, pre-trusted, so that you can keep that control. And then it's all about the guardrails and all of the things that you'd expect out of your agentic platform to make sure that you're staying on the rails. So observability nodded. Um, how do admins get a clear human readable trail of every agent action, data movement, decisions, et cetera? Yeah, yeah. You have to think very thoughtfully about delivering across the lifecycle in a way that works for customers. We have just recently gotten our agent force observability product into general availability into GA. Very exciting moment for us. And so the idea that you can have a, a surface area, we can analyze the KPIs of your agents over time. You know, if it's a service agent, what's the deflection, what's the abandonment, et cetera. But then ultimately what we're providing to our customers is this out of the box analysis of what are the underlying intents that your users are using with your agents? We can then surface those to you after we've clustered them together and then give you a quality score. This is the high quality intents that are being uh, invoked by your agent. Here's some areas that have low quality. That then brings attention uh, as the builder of the agent, as the subject matter expert, where do I wanna focus and improve? And that's gonna extend as we think about plugging in MCP into agents, as we think about agents collaborating with other agents through orchestration, so that within that observability solution, you can see the full conversation, regardless of whether that's you know, the directly with an agent force or over to a third party box agent, and then also underlying it, have all of the tracing, all the telemetry. So you have a full picture of exactly what happened, not only so you can see the quality today, but so that you can improve for tomorrow. Yeah, that makes sense. So if an IT leader is listening to us today, what is the one architectural or policy change they should be making internally to be ready for the future? Yeah. If Totally. I think it's it's less about a policy change and it's more about thinking about extending what you're capable of doing today. Right. So you already have the data that you're running your services on top of. You already have the workflows. So the question you should really be asking is, what is your approach from a platform perspective to get all of the value to the building agents so that they're more capable and that there's sort of um, more reliability underlying them? Right. And so. You know, I was talking earlier about how we brought agent script uh, to the market, and that's really driven by our own customers telling us, hey, we need more determinism mixed in with the sort of creative capabilities of Gen AI. And so, you know, that's not the kind of thing you're going to want to DIY. You want to really look at whether it's agent force, maybe it's some other solution. How do I really hone in my agents so I can have 100 percent reliability? How do I then build across a lifecycle so that I have testing that ultimately can give me confidence before I go to production? How do I then ultimately have observability once I'm in production to understand how it's actually being utilized and where are the gaps? And so to me, the, really the answer to this, this question is, what is the platform that you're bringing to bear so that you can go from your capabilities today to the agent capabilities, not just of today, but of tomorrow? So if we uh, did a fast forward into next year, what would be the amazing demo we could be working together for Dreamforce? Yeah, totally. I think. I think a lot of this multi-agent story that we're telling here today, it is just super nascent, right? We, we built a demo for last year's Dreamforce. Now we're bringing pilots as we get into the winter so that customers can build their own third-party agent integrations with AgentForce. Multi-agent is really gonna start to feel real as we think about these next three, six, nine months, the ability to affect all different types of value by connecting agents in all different sorts of uh, different ways. I think it's super exciting. I think we're going to see that starting to take hold. We're going to see the value that it's delivering. And then as I start to fast forward a little bit more, I really think about if we can bring agents together with other agents, what are the business processes that we can then deliver on top of multiple agents delegating to one another? And then I start to think about the ROI of what we are capable of delivering with these agents, with their specialized skills across wider uh, domains. And uh, I'm very excited in the next year to deliver that together. All right. Thank you so much for the conversation and your insights, Gary. That's a wrap. Thank you so much, Fernando. It's been great talking. And thank you also for joining us today. If you want to learn more about what we've been discussing, uh, please join us at box.com. Thank you.